so we do have a few questions. Great. Um, well, one of them goes back to the L. Scott. Uh -huh. um, do you make an L. Scott every year? We have, except for 2018, I didn't make any uh, red wines in 2018 because it was such a miserable vintage and the quality wasn't up to my standard. So, um, so we started in 2012 and have been making L. Scott since, except for 2018. Um, another question was actually not about these wines, but about the frost. Ah, the frost. Have we been affected yet? Yeah. Um, so the, it, we've had a series of uh, uh, frost events here in the past uh, week to 10 days. This week was especially difficult. Um, we have been very fortunate. Did you pull out? And um, <laughs> our Hanalee vineyard, our main vineyard, 37 acres, uh, has escaped any frost damage. A uh, tiny, tiny bit down in some of the new hybrids that were uh -huh. way down by the, the, the weakest part of the, of the property. But uh, we've, you know, escaped so far. We have another night tonight, that should be the last in a while that we're going to be worried about. But right. uh, a lot of other vineyards in the area have been hit um, and uh, it's been pretty, pretty rough for, for a lot of, a lot of uh, growers in the area the past uh, week to 10 days. And yeah. also, um, with this Petit Verdot, what would you pair with it? Ah, uh, like a, a lamb stew, something a little bit richer, mm -hmm. uh, you know, deeper meats, uh, you know, obviously steak is, is great. Um, you know, the beef or lamb stew is really ideal. Uh, something a little spice, you know, maybe a steak au poivre or something like that. But really, for me, it's a, it's a great uh, hearty, you know, you know, stew type of wine. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> so, should we move on to the last wine, the dessert sure. wine? So, we got the, the last wine, there. which is the Raisin Detra, with a little play on words. Uh, not Raison Detra, it's a Raisin Detra. And um, this is a wine that, uh, gosh, is a, a long story too, a uh, unique process. If you're not familiar with how we make this wine, um, we actually, I'm trying to remember when it was, it's been so long now, but uh, we're buying some grapes from uh, a grower, a tobacco farmer who's also a grape grower in south, uh, southern Virginia, um, south, a little more southeast, and uh, he had been experimenting with uh, drying, dehydrating grapes in his tobacco barn, and uh, we did a trial together at, on his property mm -hmm. with some uh, traminet that he grows, and uh, I was just fascinated with the whole process and how the wines came out that I decided to buy uh, a tobacco barn, mm -hmm. which he helped us uh, acquire and brought it up to Charlottesville. And now we have two tobacco curing barns. And um, so we started making this wine with both, we, we do a Cabernet Franc, the Raisin mm -hmm. d'Etre Rouge, and then this uh, Raisin d'Etre Blanc, which is uh, the basis of this is Petit Monsang. And uh, the process is pretty neat. We take these uh, old uh, repurposed tobacco barns that have an incredible gas-fired furnace in it, and we put the grapes on our in our harvest boxes, very one layer, very uh, loosely, you know, keep them separated so they're not all close together, and then we stack them in the barns and set the thermostat at 100, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And so there's a hot air, bur big burner, that's air is flowing throughout, and the burner comes on and off as needed. And in the course of about two weeks, these grapes will dehydrate and shrivel into raisins, and thus the name. Mm -hmm. um, and then we take them out and start the winemaking process. But these grapes will, will go from a ripeness level of you know, 25, 26, 27 bricks, or sugar con concentration up to 30, 36, 37, up to 40. And then this vintage, it actually got a little bit too dry and too concentrated. Mm -hmm. So this vintage has, we blended it down because it was so sweet uh, with some roussan to make it a little, a little mm -hmm. less viscous, if you say, less do you syrupy. Always, do you always use roussan? No, we've used different varieties depending on the vintage. We've done Riesling, we've done Viognier, but this vintage, the roussan seemed to be the best uh, blending mm -hmm. grape. So this, uh, has, uh, I think it's 73% Petit Mansang and 27% Roussan, mm -hmm. but it's still a very viscous, sweet wine. Uh, the, the grapes are, are, after they're dehydrated, mm -hmm. they're 
pressed and barrel fermented and about one third of this blend is new oak and aged for a minimum of a year in barrel and, um, and we work on the blending to depending on the, the concentration of sugar there's so much sugar in the grapes that they don't all ferment and turn into alcohol so the residual sugar this wine has about seven percent residual mm -hmm. sugar and it's really you know to me it's more of a soft turn style wine um, you see the deep dark golden color mm -hmm. and uh, the aromatics are just fantastic a lot of candied fruit mm -hmm. you know orange peel notes some pineapple yeah definitely get the pineapple yeah lots of grilled ones like grilled pineapple from the new oak mm -hmm. and then it has a really nice um, bright acidity still uh, so it's yeah. even though it's sweet it's really balanced by the acidity and the just the, the viscosity the length the weight and the palate is just very rich and very decadent mm -hmm. Me on the palate, a lot of tangerine. You know, oh, that yeah. nice bright acidity of, of, of tangerine and just a very long, you know, finish that just just lingers. And it's nice because it's not as syrupy as some dessert wines, and so you can enjoy it by itself. This was the, yeah. We don't. I didn't want to make it too heavy, too mm -hmm. sweet. I mean, we the the um, petite men saying that we had to work with was so concentrated and so sweet for me. It was just too much. So that's why. We, we blended it down to a nice balance uh, mm -hmm. with the um, Roussan. Okay. And, uh, <coughs> well, the fruit fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really nice. <coughs> yeah. Um, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> what would you pair this with? Or would you pair it with something? So, I mean, like this is uh, classic like a sauterne. <laughs> you can um, <laughs> you can have this with a, some seared foie gras before the meal or, you know, as a a uh, really great pairing, something rich like that. Mm -hmm. uh, ideal with desserts, I mean, a lemon pound cake with fruit or, and, and it's great with that, or some really yeah. strong cheese, maybe in a poise or a, a Stilton would also be great. So it has some yeah. uh, flexibility on what you pair it with. Sounds good. Yeah. Let's see if we have questions. And did you say what Raisin Detra, the play on words? The play on words, the, 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 the And what phrase. that means. <laughs> Well, raison d'être, <laughs> raison d'être is almost a, you know, uh, reason of being, however you want to literally translate it. Okay. Uh, um, mm -hmm. But this is our, our, our raisin for, our, our raisin for being, however you want to say it. Yeah. There's different, different <laughs> translations, but yeah, the raisin, raisin d'être. And we have a question about the difference between this style of wine and ice wine. Well, ice wine is usually can be made either on the vine when the when the temperatures get cold mm -hmm. and the grapes freeze on the vine and they're picked frozen um, uh, or there can be cryo extraction methods which the grapes are picked earlier and froze uh, 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 put in a, a freezer and then taken out and processed uh, frozen this is n nothing to do with that this is almost more like a late harvest style wine okay. but we, without really leaving on the vine that long if in the perfect conditions we left the grapes out there they would naturally dehydrate and concentrate so in Virginia, it's not so easy to do with the weather that we have here. So we pick them and put them in tobacco barn. Cool. And our tasting room over at Harris Creek is also, the walls are oh the yeah. tobacco barn. Yeah. That's right. We've been <laughs> to our, our tasting room at, at Harris Creek. The uh, siding, on the walls of the interior of the tasting room are from uh, the siding of tobacco barn, the metal siding from the tobacco mm -hmm. barn. We have a question about Roussan. Um, the question was if it's grown in Virginia, which of course it is, but a lot of people have never heard of that. Right, Rusana is not, uh, it was planted there at, at the Hanley Vineyard uh, by Dennis Horton. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a, you know, it's a, it's a fun grape to work with. I use it for blending mm -hmm. mostly. Actually, a lot of times I use it in the dry petite men saying as a blender to reduce the acidity. Uh, it, for me, it just uh, isn't consistent enough to meet quality level that I like uh, to do a varietal Roussan or we've blended in other blends but it's just uh, not a variety that I'm really you know fond of as, uh, as a standalone wine. Okay. Let's see. Um, can you keep an open bottle in the refrigerator after vacuum sealing it and if so for how long? Well, um, the, the uh, raisin lasts a long time. The, the, the sweet wines tend to hold up 
much longer open mm -hmm. than uh, dry wines, and so these this wine could the, the raisin a uh, week to two weeks, no problem. Depends, you know, if you vacuum, you know, uh, pump it out and get all the air out, it could last a couple weeks easily in, in open. And you know, we we have it in a, a three seventy five bottle, so it's because it's so rich and so sweet, and uh, we package it in a smaller bottle as well. Okay. Yeah, the other wines, um, the two red wines that are really young uh, will hold up for four or five days, no problem, mm -hmm. open. Okay. And I don't think you mentioned, what would you recommend as a serving temperature uh, for the Raisin Dutch then? Cold. Cold? Yeah, yeah. Really cold. Refreshing more, your standard, you know, white wine temperature uh -huh. is ideal. For and it. with our red? The red's ideal, you know, cellar temperature, 55, 60 is up in the high end. 60-ish uh, would be, uh, you know, somewhere in that range is, is good. And, but for the Raisin Dutch Rouge? Oh, the Raisin Dutch Rouge. Well, yeah. that can be, the, the red can be served a little bit chilled. Uh, okay. Yeah, even though it's a, a but it's fine uh, as well as more, you know, cellar temperature type. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we have a question that goes back to 2018 being a bad year. Mm -hmm. um, they're asking at what point did you realize that the grapes aren't up to standard? Before the harvest, actually. <laughs> the uh, I knew that it was, some, we had 25 days of rain in September of 